guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday. Uh, so today we're going to be continuing part two of our Sega uh, development unit Game Gear restoration. So if you haven't seen part one, I recommend that you take a look at that now. Uh, so basically we were able to take this rare development Game Gear uh, from, from a former uh, employee at Acclaim and we were able to get it working again. And uh, unlike normal Game Gears, it outputs composite video and we've got that part working and the controls are working so the only thing that isn't working right now is the original screen so in this episode we're going to try to see if we can get this screen uh, replaced with another one that is confirmed working from a different unit um, since the last video I also wanted to share a few updates as well so um, I've been contacted by a few other people who uh, know quite a bit about the Game Gear and what they've told me is that the uh, motherboard that's inside of this unit is an early revision that was only released in Japan and so that was interesting that was not something I knew I could tell that it was a little bit different because um, I've worked on many game gears at this point but never a twin ASIC that quite looked like this and now I know why because this was exclusive um, to Japan um, and so uh, in the next scene I'm gonna show you guys another interesting thing that I found out about the system Okay, so I'm just going to demonstrate something new that I recently discovered about this development Game Gear. Uh, so you can see I have it powered using the Model 2 brick over there, and then I've got the, um, the AV out cable. And instead of connecting it to composite video, what I'm doing right now is using my Genesis uh, Model 1 SCART cable. And, uh, and that goes to my switcher, and then eventually that goes over to my OSSC, which upscales things. So I've got a game in there, I've got Sonic 2, so let's just power this thing on and see what happens. Alright, so what you can see here is, this is actually not composite video, this is RGB. So, so this um, device outputs RGB in addition to composite and that's really significant because if uh, you know Sega or Acclaim was going to do some video captures and make like say an advertisement with uh, some some you know video then obviously you'd want to use professional recording software and hardware and um, and you'd want RGB and you wouldn't want composite video you'll notice though that it's not it's not great like you can see you see those jail bars there so you know compared to uh, the modern version of this, like a McWill mod, you get actually a higher quality RGB signal out of, out of that. Um, but nevertheless, it's still way better than composite. Okay, so we're gonna start things off by disassembling the game gear and removing the main board um, from the case. And um, <clears throat> in this case, I grabbed a, uh, a screen from another game gear, and this was one that I was upgrading to a modern LCD. And so beforehand, I know that the screen was working. I was able to try it out and verify it. And so um, hopefully that means it will have luck this time. Um, so after unscrewing everything, the next thing you've got to do is take off this tape. And this tape just helps secure the, the flex cable to the board because um, it is a rather fragile connection and there are 68 separate soldering points that keep it together. So the tape just kind of acts as an extra buffer to make sure everything holds together. Um, so yeah, we're going to start by just pulling that off. Okay, let me flip it over. And so you can see where the ribbon cable connects to the main board. So there's quite a lot that needs to be desoldered. And uh, I've done this before, and what I've found works effectively is to uh, just take the soldering iron and add a little bit of solder to it, and then bring it up to the tips of each of these pads. And then you can see with my other hand there, as, as I heat up the joints, I'm pulling ever so slightly, <clears throat> and uh, you can actually hear them, I mean, I, I turned off the audio, but you can actually hear them pop off one at a time. And so you just kind of take your iron and you work it one pin at a time, you have to kind of go slow and careful, and uh, eventually all of the pins will, will come off. Um, it's really important not to pull too hard because you'll either rip the pad straight off of the motherboard or you'll damage the, the screen. In this case, I don't particularly care if I damage the screen because this is a broken screen anyway, but I obviously don't want to damage the board. Okay, so now that the board is totally separated from the screen, the next thing that we've got to do is um, clean up these pads and tin them all properly. So I started by just getting some flux um, and putting it on all the pads. And then you can see I take my soldering iron 
and I move it up and down on each one of the pins. And um, I do that to basically tin each one of these pins and also to separate them from each other because in the process of removing the screen, some of these pins get bridged. And um, obviously you don't want that because that could create all sorts of problems with um, it working properly. So you can see there on the left, there's a few bridges there. So I'm just using my, my iron and getting all that stuff uh, separated off. Okay, so now here's the, the new screen that I'm going to attempt to install. And so what I did was I used some heat resistant Kapton tape and I taped down half of the screen and I made sure that all of the pins were aligned. And this was actually pretty difficult. I had to go really slow and careful to make sure that all of the pins were aligned. And, and thankfully the board has numbers one through 68 on there. So you can make sure that you know the furthest left pin is on pin one and the furthest right pin is on pin 68. And then from here, what I'm doing is, is I'm adding some flux and basically I'm going one at a time and I'm just trying to right now tack the board down, I'm just trying to get the two joined together and I'm not exactly looking for a perfect connection right now. I'm just trying to get enough of it connected so that I don't have to hold it with my hand. And uh, you know, it's a slow process. I'm just kind of going bit by bit here. And uh, there are bridges that I'm creating with my soldering iron, but that's not a big deal because I'm still going to come back and clean it up later. And uh, yeah, you see sometimes I try to go over onto the onto the flat flex cable, but it's not a good idea to do that because this thing is temperature sensitive. So you try to keep the heat mainly on the board and not on the cable itself. Okay, so now that those are all tacked down, I'm gonna use this, um, set of tweezers to kind of do a better job of connecting everything together. And then once that's happened, I can pull the tape back a little bit and continue working. Okay, so I have reassembled this Game Gear, and for now I don't have any of the video out stuff connected because I don't need it at all. Um, I just want to test and see if the screen transplanted correctly. So let's give it a shot. Oh, well, that stinks. So yeah, doesn't look like it worked. And um, I know this is a working screen, so either I damaged the screen and now it's dead, or perhaps it's some other component of the circuitry on the Game Gear that's just not working. Um, so I'm gonna have to think about that and come up with some other ideas. Maybe I can find something else. Okay guys, so unfortunately this attempt to get the screen working was not successful. Um, I figured it was worthwhile to show anyway because I have used this method before and successfully transplanted screens from one Game Gear to another. So I was hoping it was going to work in this case. Unfortunately, it did not. And it might not have worked for a variety of reasons. Um, it's possible that I damaged the screen between um, in, you know, removing it from the other Game Gear and installing it here. Uh, it's also possible I didn't quite line everything up right, although I did go back and check everything with a microscope, and I'm pretty sure that it's all connected properly. Um, so it probably means that, yeah, either the screen is toast as well, or maybe some other component of the circuit isn't quite working right. Like maybe something related to contrast is, or something related to the backlight isn't working quite right. Um, so, you know, for now, I think I'm just going to leave this system as is because it does work. Um, you do get the video out, which is the most interesting and compelling thing about this dev game gear. And technically, if I ever wanted to, or if the original owner uh, ever wants to, we could do a McWill mod where we replace this screen altogether and use a modern backlit LCD. And that looks absolutely stunning. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to discuss that with him and see what he thinks. And, uh, and of course, we can do that. Um, but either way, this extremely rare, one-of-a-kind system is working. Uh, the important thing is, is that all of you guys will get a chance to see this at the upcoming Long Island Retro Gaming Expo. And I also wanted to shout out and thank Video Game Trading Post in particular because uh, they connected me up with, um, with this developer and uh, you know we never would have met otherwise and I never would have had the opportunity to restore this piece of history. Uh, so thanks again for watching guys and I'll see you next time.